Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I, as Paul was saying, I was going to give you uh, some um, view on the, what we do in the Crozet and Kerrigan area. So, to assess the losses. So, on our case, what you see here is not um, what happens commonly, it's uh, really the exception. You can have 20 whales around the boat and you have maybe one or two heads coming up on the hooks. So we can't use that in our case. What we're doing um, is that we're, we're using a grid to take the special variability into account because it's very highly variable in space. So we use a 0 0.2 degrees grid and the common method we use uh, consists in comparing uh, catch rates it, inside uh, in each of the cells and this was uh, published in 2006 for Crozet and Kerrigan. So we, what we do is like this uh, grid in gray, uh, the cell here, here in gray for example, we, if you have uh, for example 300 grams per hook catch rate in absence of whales and then um, you have only uh, 100 gram per hooks when you have, uh, oh sorry, kilo whales. Then you assume you have lost 200 grams per hooks uh, due to kilo whales. And this loss uh, you can multiply by the number of hooks you have set in this uh, cell. Like if you have 1 million hooks, then you assume you have lost 200 tons of fish. And then we do that for each cell. And we do that for each case, like we have either uh, kilo whales alone or sperm whales alone or both together and this gives us uh, the total, total amount of fish that is lost uh, due to depredation. And what we got uh, for, we do this for Kerguelen and Crozet and uh, um, this is the time series for the last something like 10 years and it does vary a bit between years and overall we have 30% of the fish uh, lost to in Crozet and about 5% in Kerguelen. Um, because Kerguelen has a lot of more catch, um, the total amount of tons is the same in Crozet and Kerguelen. It's about 3,000 uh, tons in 10 years. And well, that's it. Uh, oh, so we were quite happy with the result we got, but we thought we might find another method. Uh, use uh, actually the grenadier, which is a common bycatch that's widespread in Crozet and Kerguelen. And what we observe from the, um, from the boat is that they don't seem to be affected by the, the depredation. Like when the whales arrive, you don't see any two fish coming up, but it doesn't seem to affect the grenadier. And probably it's not uh, as good and um, not a big fish, not very fat and has uh, spines on, the, on each of the scales too. It's not, maybe not as good for the, the whales, we don't like it. So what we uh, have done is that, for example, uh, that's a simplified example with a, a line with 50% uh, two fish on it and 50% uh, grenadier. And let's say the whales, the kilo whales arrive and take uh, half of the two fish. So the proportion between two fish and grenadier is going to change. It's going to be 33% of two fish and uh, the percentage of uh, grenadier is going to raise to 67%. So the question was, um, how many fish, how many two fish do I need to put back to get back from 33% and 67% back to the normal um, proportion in absence, 50% and 50%. So it was easy to calculate the number of fish that is sort of missing. And we did this and uh, we did the same kind of calculation with the Grenadavis method on a 0 0.2 degrees uh, size grid basis. And we've compared the same exact uh, grid cells with the uh, CPUE method. And we, what we obtain is a pretty good relation between the two. Um, on the y uh, x axis is the Grenadier method and the y axis is the CPUE method I presented first. And as you can see, the, 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 it's almost close to one uh, relation, uh, correlation between the two and R square is 0 0.96. So it did, does work pretty well. Um, this method uh, really supports that the results we have obtained with the CPUE method. 
Uh, it does work only if you have enough grenadier, of course, so it doesn't, I'm not saying it's a better method, but it does support the, the previous one. That's it.